So when I'm using the Einstein, um, I'm going to put it on a light stand here. First thing is when you pull it out of the cabinet, usually it's going to be seated in this position. In order to bring this down, you just need to loosen that up a little bit, bring that down like that, and then you'll notice I'm just tightening it with my finger because I only want to put enough pressure on it until it stops. I don't want to over tighten that because I'll break this housing here. With this little nut on the side here, I want to loosen that up only until I can't feel it inside anymore. And if you can see, it goes in a little bit there. I want to loosen that up just to where I can't feel it anymore. I want to avoid pulling this all the way out because sometimes it doesn't like to go back in if you pull it all the way out. So I'm going to put this on the light stand just like that. Now, sometimes it doesn't want to quite fit. You have to wiggle it a little bit or maybe you have to loosen this up a little bit more. But now I'm gonna tighten that up to make sure it's on there very nice and firm. And the way I can double check it to make sure it's on there tight enough and it's, it doesn't have any more wiggle room is I can just pick the whole thing up and it's on there securely. And then I can adjust to the side to tilt this up and down if I need to. Again, I'm just gonna tighten that up just enough. So we're gonna take a look at the back of the Einstein. The Einstein is simple in its button layout, but kind of complex in the information that's in the screen here. So the way you navigate around the screen on the Einstein is you click the function button. And when you click the function button, different areas are gonna turn blue. And whatever's highlighted blue is the field that you are manipulating. So right now, by default, it's gonna highlight this top corner here, and that's gonna change your power settings. Now, this can be a little confusing on the Einstein because there's a lot going on in this screen. You can pretty much forget about most of this stuff on the right. Let's really just focus on this number up here in the top left corner of this screen. It's a zero F. That also correlates to this screen over here on the far left. This is a meter that kind of shows you how much power you're using. Right now, you can see the, the meter is all the way filled up to the top at uh, full power. 0F means full power. By default, I don't have to push the function button at all to change the power setting on the Einstein. If I want to go down to minimum power, I can push and hold the adjust button, and you'll see that fall all the way down, and it goes down to negative 8F. So, the way this measures power, there's a bunch of different ways it measures power, but you can either look at that screen right there to see how much power you're outputting, or you can look down here and you can see that on the left side of the screen it says 256. That's a fraction, that's 1 256th power. At the very top, that's one of one power, which means full power. So what's half of one? One half. So the next stop down is what looks like a two, but it's really one half. Then four is one quarter, one eighth, etc., and so on. Every time you change from one to two to four to eight, you are having or doubling the amount of power that's coming out of this light. But here's the beautiful thing about the Einstein. Notice that I'm at negative 8.0 right now. If I wanted to go up, let's say I metered my light and I needed just two tenths of a stop more light, not quite three tenths of a stop more, two tenths of a stop more. I could just bump that up by two clicks of my button and you'll see that it goes up by 10th stop increments, which is very, very handy for precise and accurate lighting. So this box up here, you mainly just look at this reading right there, but honestly, you could kind of forego most of that if you wanted to and just look at this box. Both of them kind of show you the same information in different ways, it's just power settings. The next box right now is grayed out and that's because I don't have the model lamp on. So I'm gonna go on to the next box. And there you can see it says model off. If I click the adjust button, then that's gonna turn the model lamp on and it's going to have it set. Right now it's got a little light bulb with kind of a recycle in it. And um, that just means that it is uh, trying to track with what I adjust right here. So now you'll see that that area right there is active. And if I want that model lamp to be really bright, I can come in here and adjust it, or if I want it to come back down to the lowest setting, I can adjust that. We typically don't use that. I can go to the next one with the flash, and that's gonna try and track with my flash output. And the last one is full, just meaning that it's on at full power. Typically, we use this either at full power or off. 
We typically don't use those other two settings. Just remember with the Einstein, the model lamp is very hot. It's a tungsten bulb. So you do wanna make sure that you turn it off. You only have it on when you absolutely need it. You turn it off immediately. You never ever put the Einstein away without having turned that model lamp off. Always make sure that that model lamp's off. Then the next screen just says ready. And we can change that to off, a little musical note. And what that does is whenever I make a change, um, it's gonna have a little audible chime that happens. Um, then there's a little light bulb so that whenever the flash goes off, whenever it's ready, when it's recycled and it's ready to go off again, the model lamp will pop on um, for a second to let you know that it's ready. And then there's both. We can do both at the same time or just off. I typically like to keep the little um, musical note on so I have an audible chime whenever I'm changing the power settings, etc. The next area is very small, but it just says on and it has a couple of little downward arrows. That is for the optical slave unit. Um, up on top of the flash unit, there's a little bulb up here. And what that does is it is, is it sees the light from another flash. So if I have another flash in the studio, two Einsteins, they don't have any way of communicating with each other um, because the wireless system we use for them does not talk to multiple flashes. Instead, you just need to have, you need to tell the Einstein to turn on the optical slave unit. And then when flash A goes off, flash B will see that flash and it will also go off. So if you need to use multiple Einsteins, you've got to turn on that optical slave unit. However, if you're only using a single Einstein, turn it off. Uh, what can happen there is people in other studios might be popping their flashes and that will trigger that, that slave unit to fire also. Even something like an iPhone flash could potentially trigger that unit to go off. So if your flash is going off multiple times and you're not sure why because you didn't trigger it, that's probably why you need to come in here and turn that function off. The next area is just, it says color or action. Color is the default. That means that the, the flash is going to try to maintain a color temperature of about 5,500 uh, Kelvin. If you need it to recycle very, very quickly because you're going to shoot fast action, that's when you'd want to come in here and change it to action. That should not be the default setting and it should not be what you leave it on. Color is where it should stay for the most part, only when you need very, very fast recycling should you change it to action. The last two things down here we do not need to worry about. That's only if we were using the proprietary wireless trigger system for the Einstein, which we are not. So that's all the features that we need back there. The only other thing is over here we have our test button to just pop the flash um, and of course our power button. And then this sync port up here is where you would plug in your wireless transmitter, our Photix or our Velo adapters. All right, so now we're going to show you how to use light modifiers with the Einstein flash. So the Einstein does not have a built-in light modifier the way that the flash points do. You'll see that it just comes with this black cap on it. So there's these little um, gray levers on either side of the, the flash. You just push those and you can take off the cover. You can see that when you push those, there's these little claws in, inside that retract. Um, on the Einstein also, some of them will have a protective like frosted dome, some won't. Uh, so it's not a big deal if you find one that looks like this, just be extra careful and try not to touch the flash tube, please. So set down your protective cover, please remember where you put it so you don't lose it. And then on the flash point, they have that built-in um, parabolic reflector. Well. The parabolic reflector for the Einstein looks like this. It's all silver, um, kind of chrome looking. And you'll notice that some of them are kind of beat up. You can see this one's a little beat up around the outside edge. That's okay, they still work just fine. In order to put these on, they're very simple. You just retract those claws and then place it right on there. And you can see inside there and see that those four claws are completely attached. So it is important that you do, you know, reach around and look inside there to make sure they're not, or that they are attached. Because if, for, for instance, if it looked like this, you know, one, two of those claws aren't attached, then it's very wobbly. 
and if you tried to put anything else in there like a, a, a grid or another light modifier of some sort it can fall off and it can damage the flash and protect, potentially you know, hurt you if that glass breaks or something. So please do be careful. So putting this on and taking it off is relatively simple. You know, if you do find that you have a little issue with it, something I like to do is just angle it to make sure I get it on t the two closest um, clamps first and then push it on the other side and that'll go on there just fine. Now with the flash point, we showed you how to use um, grids, show you how to do the same thing on an Einstein. You've, on an Einstein, in order to use a grid, you've got to have a parabolic reflector on the flash. Now again, I told you they're a little beat up sometimes, so they might be a little dented around the edge and that might make it a little harder to put these in. But with that grid, remember we've got this tension spring right here. So we're just going to push that in and make sure we've got kind of even pressure all around the edge. And there we go. It's as simple as that to put that grid into uh, the Einstein. Now then to pull it back out, we just grab that tab. And sometimes it's harder than others because they might be deformed that, uh, there we go. So sometimes again, if this is a little bit bent around the edges, it might be hard to get these in and out. Uh, if you find one that's just too difficult, um, just grab a different light modifier, grab a different parabolic reflector. We've got quite a few of them in there. So we can take that off. The next thing I want to show you is what's called the XMOD system. So the Einsteins use this thing that's called the XMOD system. And you can see that this is basically just a parabolic reflector with a rail system fitted to the outside of it. So putting it on is very simple because it's exactly like the parabolic reflector. We just put that on there, make sure all four of those are attached. And now you see there is this rail system around the outside. The rail system is meant to accept a couple of different light modifiers. It can accept a snoot, uh, barn doors, or gels. So I'm going to show you how to attach the snoot to it. So. This is the snoot for the Einstein. Notice it's got this big, rec uh, not rectangular, but a, a big square um, flange around the outside. Whereas the flash point is just circular, right? And it's got those three little prongs. So whenever you're looking for a snoot, you do not want this one. It's not going to fit on there, right? Instead, you want this one. And you can see again, we've got this rail system. We can just slide it right in there. Now, if for some reason, if you try to put it on there and uh, maybe it does not want to go in. So for instance, let's see, like this, it gets stuck halfway. That means you're in the front rail system. You want the back rail system to put it in there. And even in the front rails, sometimes you, you might need to use it that way. For instance, if I was using some gels, we have these little cardboard cutouts that help protect the gels. You would slide that in this back channel and be able to shoot through it. But if you wanted to use a gel and a snoot, you could do that by putting the gel in the back channel and putting the snoot in the front channel. You just have to get past this little clip down there to make it go all the way down. We do have barn doors also. We just don't use them very often because we have some other uh, uh, light modifiers that work a little better. But if you wanted to use barn doors, you would have to use the XMOD system with that. And then the last light modifier that we're going to show you how to use is a softbox. So here we have the softbox. The softboxes for the Einsteins um, are already put together, unlike the flash points where you have to put them together. So you'll find these uh, hanging on the wall in the equipment room. So this is a little tricky to put on the first few times you do it, but with a small softbox, it shouldn't be too difficult. You have to hold onto the ribs, right? Again, that metal structure on the outside. And now what I want to do is open these um, prongs up. And what I want to do is I don't want to try and put it on there all at once. I like to put on the, the edge closest to me and then bring it around to put the other edge on. So here's what I'm going to do. I put those two prongs on and make sure they're attached. And then I slowly put the other ones on. And now what I want to do is run my finger around the outside or just give it a visual inspection to make sure that they're not hanging off. If I see a prong hanging out, I want to make sure to take it off and reattach it. So for instance, I don't want this to happen. 
where I've got two prongs attached, but then these two prongs are not attached. Obviously that's not stable. It might stay on there for a little while, but it's not gonna stay on very well. So then I can take it off the same way, release that, and then pull off one side and then the other. Now with larger soft boxes, it's gonna be more difficult. With larger soft boxes on the Einstein system, you might wanna have another person help you just to stabilize it on the other side because they get, again, a little cumbersome, a little bit heavy, and a little weird to put on and off of there. But that's the basics of using different light modifiers with the Einstein. One, I guess one last thing, is if you did wanna use an umbrella with the Einstein system, the opening for the umbrella is on top of the flash. You just have to unscrew this screw, put the umbrella pole through there, and then tighten it back up, and you're good to go. That's it.